Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the, the books. books, your online librarians. And we had a request from one of you, and you asked for a grades two through four book haul. So we thought that many of you would like reading recommendations on some popular great series for kids in grades two through four. So this is just a reminder that most picture books are written on a second to third grade level. This is I Love You Bunnies. I love this one, and you can probably guess why. It has stickers. stickers! I love stickers. This is, of course, the story of Thumper. Okay, so this one's really cute. Thumper and his sisters decide they want to show their mom that they love her. And so they go off in search of flowers to make her a basket of flowers. Oh, it's a cute one. The pictures are cute and it's bunnies. So what a perfect springtime book. This is an I can read book. This is reading level two with some help. It's Guinness World Records Wacky Wheels. But this series, kids love the Guinness Book of World Records. And even in junior high, the Guinness Book of World Records Records are some of the most checked out beat up books that we have. This is Guinness World Records. This particular one is about monster trucks and bikes and all that kind of stuff. Level two is high interest stories for developing readers. If you're using guided reading, this is level N. So there's all kinds of reading things and different schools use different ones. There are some popular ones, Lexile, AR, guided reading, and of course the I Can Read or World of Reading or Step Into Reading series have their one, two, three, four. Do these vary in reading levels or are they all level two for this series? They're all level twos, but the letter does go up to as high as a P, which obviously higher letter a little bit harder. When you look at that, just make sure to pay attention that a higher number, it goes from anywhere from A to Z, A being the very, very, very earliest, I, the, uh, and Z obviously being like sixth, seventh, or higher grade level. N's still towards the beginning. If you're getting to O and P, you're starting to get closer to the third, fourth grade level. But those ones, of course, will not be labeled as easy readers. But the Guinness World Record ones do vary. Stickers are in this book, and they're very sparkly and fun. This is again from the show Frozen, The Right Track. This is, follows the story of Anna and Kristoff and their visit with the little trolls. See, this one's going to be in the first and second grade level, upper first grade. And of course, Frozen's always popular. Can't go wrong with a good Frozen book. This is Disney Moana's Step Into Reading series. And as you can see, this is step two and step three. So this is gonna go anywhere from your really good preschool readers all the way through your third grade readers, depending on which book you grab. Some of them have games in them, some of them have stickers, because sparkly stickers are always fun. So Disney's Moana, again, it's a whole series of them, and kids love Moana, and they're step into reading, and they are perfect. This is the Data Data series, whatever you want to call it. March of the Mini Beasts is the first one. The second one is Don't Disturb the Dinosaurs. So these are a fun series, new series that just came out and just kind of give me an idea of what it's about. While selling chocolate bars for a fundraiser, Gabe, Lara, and Caesar find themselves face to face with the mysterious neighbor, Dr. Gustav Bunsen. Bunsen? Bunsen burner? <laughs> Through this chance to encounter, the kids discover that Bunsen's home is actually a state of the art laboratory filled with the latest and greatest technology. Now this science-loving trio cannot wait to try out Bunce's new invention. Because after all, what's the worst that could happen? Grades so, two through four. I think if after they're done with this, if they're reading a little better, uh, it's still quite a ways harder. But middle grade reader, you could go with the Tesla's Attic. Oh yeah. Series. And Frank like Einstein kind of series. Okay, so there's one for every reading level. Because by the time you get to fourth grade, you are going to have kids who are reading in that middle grade level. And the Tesla's Attic and the books in that series would be great for them. But these, as you can see, they still have pictures. They're about the same level as your Magic Tree House books. And they have big bold fonts. So that would be really good for both struggling readers and regular readers, as well as dyslexic readers. Olive and Beatrix. Olive's name, the I, is a test tube. So I'm gonna guess that these have another science one. This magic science. Magic science? That. Oh, fun. Okay, so these two are twins. And magic and science. What a great way to bring so many things together. The super smelly moldy blob and the not so itty bitty spider. So you have some pictures and words in this one as well. So it's written kind of almost in a mix between a comic book style and chapter book or an easy reader. 
I think that's a good format because a lot of kids, the comic style really helps them to grasp the next level and to get into it. It's a whole nother kind of reading to take inferences from the pictures. I like the graphic novel format too because it makes them use both sides of the brain so they can start to not only develop their reading skills but develop new neural pathways to help them further in their reading and schooling. We do have to teach kids how to read pictures and maps and diagrams and all of that in their textbooks and it's a really good skill to start early. To kind of give you an idea of the difference between a really early chapter book and a little bit older chapter book. So Owl Diaries is just actually a step below like Data and all of them Beatrice. This is what we call a first step chapter book. Most of the page will be covered in a picture with a little bit of text and a lot of white space. The next step up, you still have pages that have big pictures on them, but then you'll have pages that have almost the whole page or words or very few pictures. And this is gonna be probably first and second grade. And this is probably gonna be second and third grade. Mm -hmm. Of course, readers vary a lot at this age. So the thing is a lot of these books can go to multiple ages. Then you're gonna move up to about a third to fourth grade reading level. You'll still have a few pictures, but not a ton. And then the last level, this is gonna be your hard or fourth grade readers this is starting to get into your fifth grade you'll notice all most or all of the pictures are gone text is a little bit smaller and there's still some white space but not a ton so that's how you're going to tell along the ways if it's approximately where you need that book to be level wise a good rule of thumb is one we've all heard and it's open to a page and have the kid read it every time they don't know a word they hold up a finger or if they get a word wrong if they hold up five fingers that book is probably too hard for them to read by themselves doesn't mean they can't read that book, but they're going to need you to read it with them. Good way is you read a page, they read a page, help each other the back and forth. If they hold up less than five fingers, you can have them just keep a little notebook and like learn the words or help them look up the words. If you got an e-reader, just hold your finger on it. One or two words, it may even be a little easy, but there's no reason they couldn't read it anyways. You want a book to be just a tiny bit challenging so that they do improve, but you don't want it to be so hard and so challenging that they give up and that they don't like reading it. You just have to find that right fit, kind of like a shoe. In some kids, it may vary. More stubborn kids might not care if they held up six fingers because it's that Star Wars book they've been wanting to read and they're determined to read it no matter what. And they <laughs> might read it with Siri or a dictionary defining the words for them. You know your kids, they know themselves. Just kind of help them find a good gauge. This is about Ava the little owl and there's a whole series of them. But in this one, her friend asks her to help her plan the treetop festival. And she starts out with all this help and then slowly everybody drops out for various reasons and she's left to figure it out on her own. Can she put it all together in time and pull off the greatest treetop festival her town's ever known? We'll have to find out. Another good book series, we don't have it here, would be The Cupcake Cousins is going to read on about a second to fourth grade level as well, depending on the kid. And it's going to be the same level as Data, maybe just slightly harder, a few more words, a little thicker book. These are the junior novels for Monster High. No explanation needed there. Monster High is... Monster High. No. Super Turbo versus the Flying Ninja Squirrels. Super Turbo is a little hamster who, he has some friends that are part of the superhero pet league of their school. And the master evil dude steals the Ninja Squirrels' eight golden acorn. They show up in the school. They are upset their acorn is gone. It's their sacred acorn. Superhero pet league has to help them to find the acorn before it's too late. So Star vs. the Forces of Evil is a show on Disney Channel and that's why it's so popular. It and has a really fun format, a format that kids really like. It gives them, ad again, additional reading skills. They have to read pictures, lists, journal, and there's even, it says, a recipe for nachos in here. So this will be appealed to those who like Diary of Wimpy Kid, Dwarf Diaries, and those. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, the wand allows them to open up portals into other dimensions, some not so good dimensions. And that's where the forces of evil come from. Gotta through. find the nacho recipe. I would say it does go up to tweens. And a family recipe for nachos. Dragon Masters, Rise of the Earth Dragon. It's a very fun adventure series that has lots to do with dragons. And it's for grades two. It says grades one through three, but I'd say you could go up to as high as grades four for real big dragon fans. So if your kids like this series and they're getting a little better at reading, try How to Train Your Dragon. Another one they might like is Kingdom of Renly by Quinn. Squirrel in the House by Vivian Vandeville. This follows the story of a little squirrel and it is Nemesis the dog. Yes, it's told to the squirrel's point of view. And one winter he gets really cold and decides to break his rule and go into dog's house and get warm. But then 
chaos ensues as dog tries to chase squirrel out of the house and as a result uh, one of the young boys in the house disappears and dog and squirrel have to team up to try and find him this is ghost sitter by shelly brown this one is another one that's an upper higher grade level because it doesn't have pictures tiffany hart dreams of one thing to be class present however dreams turn into nightmares when she ends up almost dead in an abandoned building and develops the oh so awful gift of ghost seeing unfortunately tiffany only knows one person who can help her shake this ghoulish problem her neighbor and the weirdest boy at school justin Henderson. Justin has seen ghosts since he was nine, a creepy claim that has earned him the privilege of eating lunch by himself for years. Together they start to unravel a mystery with dead orphans, a white witch, and phantom spiders. To save their lives and the afterlives of innocent children, they must face a terrifying specter as well as a ghastly woman who isn't afraid of hurting kids dead or alive. Can Tiffany win the school election and solve her ghost problems? We hope you enjoyed our information on some new readers for grades two through four and be sure to like comment and subscribe this is a really important age group because you can really gain some readers and that increases all their test scores and their grades across the board not just in reading but in math science history and everything so this is really a good foundation for the future this is the age range where they stop learning to read and start reading to learn and that's why it's such a big bridge in their reading skills until next time happy reading bye, bye.